cork branches, which are cool because I'd never seen these available until we brought them in. And these are actually exterior cork branches. Part of keeping a tree healthy is pruning it. Yep. Um, you know, so they actually still have the pith or the actual wood inside. That will decay faster than the than the actual uh, cork bark will. And your springtails, your isopods, stuff like that will love it. And remember with a lot of these things, the, the bark is where it's providing a lot of structure. So even as it decays inside, it doesn't mean like normally the branch will collapse or yeah. anything like that. Yep. Um, I've used these, I love them in like for like a bronia tanks. A lot of those different lizards that, you know, like to go out on a limb or whatnot. Uh -huh. And then also, <laughs> uh, so. and um, you know, they, they need that structure. Maybe they're too heavily bodied to really like, they won't tear up your plants. Even some of your perching frogs and stuff that are okay with not quite smooth surfaces. Yep. Cork is kind of rough, I'll love this too. Yeah. Yeah, um, I've used them in, with my bicolor, and instead of going vertical up, like using them yep, uh, horizontally. sideways and everything. Yeah, yeah yep. that's what's nice. You can, you know, it is wood. So yep. most of us, you know, we have a garage with some basic woodworking tools. You can drill it, you can cut it, you can do a lot to it and kind of make that tank yourself. I've done big plywood tanks where I literally drilled a hole through the outside structure, put silicone on the base of this and drew like a big old lag screw through the bottom yeah. of a big branch to hold it in place and stuff like that. Perfectly fine. Yeah. Um, it's cool. They come in a bunch of different sizes. Why they're really good to be individually pictured and we even sell twigs that are like six or eight inches long really yeah. thin ones you can see it gives a lot of different surface area and you can add a lot of depth yeah and i have seen also it's neat because you can have you can have a branch the animal goes up or if you have a terrestrial animal you can easily lay it down and kind of mimic like roots or a tree buttress going down and that gives a, you could see like a lot of frogs a lot of vertical yeah. surface or invertebrates things yeah, like yeah. That. you've in, in some ways you've exponentially grown the amount of surface area that yeah tank like has. so if you think about here's the floor of the tank here's your light up top You've got a lot of surface area. You've got a lot of areas that are actually collecting and dripping water, which is gonna change how water flows. Underneath is gonna be drier than the rest yep. of your habitat and probably a little bit less humid. Yep. You're blocking light and also UV. So you're providing temperature, humidity, and light, you know, photo period variance for that animal. So yeah. you've just made that um, that habitat a lot more complicated, yep. especially when you go through and put a lot of epiphytes like yep. um, bromeliads, mosses, there's a bunch of ferns that do really well. Um, that way and you add, you make a really, really complicated tank. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, it, it's, co it's complicated from a, you know, um, the activity for the animal and you know what it's exposed to, but it's easy for you. Yeah, it allows so. the animal to take care of themselves. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Instead of you having to like dial that in, that's where, you know, larger tanks become so much more of an advantage and more complicated yeah. tanks. Like the animal can choose where it wants to be. Exactly. So you can concentrate on replicating an environment instead of replicating this is an animal with this needed hot spot, this needed humidity to shed. Yep. Um, you want to make sure you're hitting that, but you can provide a lot of opportunities to yeah. just yeah. naturally. That's cool. So. That's cool.